hello assalamu alaikum to all my viewers today i will try to cover up guide on chapter 46 organization of nervous system basic function of synapse and neurotransmitters we are going to do this um, is like that we are going to go through this chapter part by part for easy learning and better understanding and uh, you may understand truly if you highlight in your book the highlighted areas that i'm going to show you in this clip so let's start the topic in the beginning of the chapter it states about two important functions one is thought process and then the other is control process now uh in case of nervous system when we are going to talk about it we actually what comes to our mind about nervous system is some certain parts which include brain spinal cord then there are nerves and sensations then while we can compare our brain the nervous control that control part that is brain is like it's like a computer right that it may work with a lot of inputs and it may provide a lot of outputs those inputs that we are talking about here or we are comparing it to it's in case of human body there are sensations these sensations work as inputs to our brain then the brain processes them and then it just gives control to the peripheral parts of our body to do certain tasks now these sensations that we are talking about can be actually taken up by the body with the help of some receptors receptors such as taste touch temperature pain then tactile stimulus etc the reason that i am telling uh, these things would be actually pretty much clear as we forward proceed uh, in the next part that we are seeing is the general design of the nervous system central nervous system uh, has basic unit of function that is neuron and that is actually very clear to us now the central nervous system contains 100 billion neurons that's a lot of neurons then actually this whole portion of the chapter this whole portion actually will state further that uh, these neurons pass the sensations from the periphery to the center central nervous system with the help of synapse now we have to know that what is synapse first now synapse actually i'm going to tell the definition that synapse are the sites and functional contact between neurons or between neurons and other effector cells now there are some keywords that i have said that one is neuron and other is effector cells or effector organs okay neuron has certain parts that i think we all know that neuron has a soma or cell body exon and dendrites multiple dendrites coming out of the soma now synapse we is actually a connecting part of the exon of one neurite or dendrite or soma or exon of other neuron okay that's the connecting point now i'm going to show you the peak in this picture we can see that um it's a neuron okay so it's a typical neuron these extended processes coming out of the soma can be known as dendrites its cell body or soma and this is the exon these are exonal processes and these may be dendrites of other neurons okay so primarily let's think that these are neurons or uh, dendrites of other neurons so you see these circular portions the connecting areas the whole connecting area is known as synapse so let's go to the previous the below mark portion actually states that this synapse worked uh, in case of transmitting signals from one neuron to another and it occurs in one way direction i'm going to elaborate it later as we further head into the chapter but take it as it's an important property of synapse by which actually a lot of signals or sensation are transferred from the periphery to the brain the next portion sensory part of nervous system or sensory receptors actually so this part actually states about sensory receptor that nervous system 
our general functions of nervous system are actually triggered by some sensations there has to be some sensations right like if you are going to uh, if you are actually sitting in a place and a mosquito bites and there is a reflex kind of thing working it is actually first of all initiated by the bite of the mosquito i hope you are getting it now i said previously that for a control system to work it needs input right in case of human brain the incoming data or input is sensation or sensory receptors take up the external sensation of the environment now there are receptors for taking up sensations like visual receptors rods and cone cells auditory receptors receptors of or receptors of hearing in case of hair cells or cochlea tactile receptors on the body surface these are the receptors some receptors now as we head on now this portion is important as it states the information enters the cerebral nervous system through peripheral nerves and is conducted immediately to multiple sensory areas and these areas are the spinal cord at all levels the reticular substances of medulla pons and mesencephalon of the brain the cerebellum thalamus and areas of the cerebral cortex these are the ways now in this figure guide on figure along 46.2 we can see that um how from the periphery these are the peripheral parts the sensation is carried away to the central nervous system by the help of peripheral nerves the sensory component of peripheral part peripheral nerves so now it's clear to us that uh, what we previously read now another thing that i would want to clear you th is that what is reticular substance reticular substance can be defined as a mass of nerve cells and fibers situated primarily in the brain stem and functioning upon stimulation especially it functions in case of arousal of an organism now what do you mean by arousal arousal means awakening giving the feeling or sensation like something is happening but that sensation that it will provide will not be specific type of sensation like any kind of pain it won't do that it will just arouse or awaken you now let's go to the another part uh, which is motor part of nervous system and uh, let's uh, try to understand what is actually effector now effectors that i'm telling you actually earlier before actually growing through all this that effectors are actual anatomical structures that perform functions detect dictated by nerve signals okay now what does that mean i mean by that after integration of sensations nervous system will give you certain types of command to the peripheral organs or peripheral structures to do for the command now all those peripheral structures which follow the command of the cns or actually the nervous system are the effectors okay i hope it's clear now let's go so motor control actually is achieved by these three points here stated contraction of appropriate skeletal muscles throughout the body contraction of smooth muscles in the internal organs secretion of active and chemical substances in both exocrine and endocrine glands so now these activities are collectively called motor functions of nervous system and the muscles and glands are called effectors which are actually situated at the periphery as i stated before now in below this portion states that the skeletal muscles can be controlled in various levels of cns controlling including spinal cord reticular substance vessel ganglia cerebellum motor cortex each of these areas has their own specific role in performing functions and in below states that the lower region are connected with autonomic or instantaneous muscle responses to other stimuli and higher x regions are actually concerned with more complex functions like controlling the thought process now when we are here i would actually want to uh, describe you the classification of how this process actually works to make it more easy i am showing you this diagram 
that nervous system actually controls consists of two parts that is central nervous system cns and pns means peripheral nervous system in case of central nervous system there are two things one is brain another one is spinal cord in case of peripheral nervous system we can see that it has somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system now in case of peripheral nervous system it has actually motor component and sensory component somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system are actually um how should i say are controls of motor control system okay so in case of somatic there are cranial nerves and spinal nerves in case of autonomic there are sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system and um the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems actually are induced in the control of heart smooth muscles of organs glands blood vessels etc okay now the next part is processing of information integrative function of the nervous system so in this uh, portion the most important point to notify is that more than 99% of the sensory information is discarded by the brain as irrelevant and unimportant why is that in below there are two example one is of clothing and another is one of um vision field now think of it like uh, you are actually concentrating on a particular thing that you are trying to concentrate on with your eyes but your visual field is extended to quite a good length and catches a lot of sensory information in the surroundings but our brain when we concentrate on a particular thing cancels the all the surrounding things and focuses on that particular thing that is very important to us so by channeling and processing of information is called integrative function of the nervous system now this is not so hard to understand cause our brain actually does a lot of integration work and processes the data that it receives the sensations and then converts to it as what is actually important to us and according to that it sends commands to our peripheral nervous for a lot of functions the next topic is role of synapse in processing of information now the following topic is actually very 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 important to understand because um synapse is actually very important in case of channeling of signals and of sensations as we say but uh, the main thing about in this uh lines is that we have to realize that there are a lot of facilitatory and inhibitory signals we have to actually put it in our brain like this that there are actually many signals which can be also facilitatory that increase and inhibitory that inhibits uh, the functions of the nervous system that are controlling synaptic transmissions now why is that important is that there can be weak signals and there can be strong signals and even though there are maybe variation of signals in some cases synapses may be also be different like in some cases some post synaptic neurons actually responds with large number of outputs and other response to a few that is the variation in structure of synapse synapses are uh, a few more types like there are chemical synapses and there is um, electrical synapses and according to the synaptic clip formation the synapse formation there can be variation like synapses with exon and dendrite right? synapses with exon and soma synapses with exon and exon so it can vary and according to the variation functions can also vary that we have to keep in mind so uh, we can say like this the synapse perform a selective action and then actually blocks weak signals and sometimes it doesn't even block weak signals sometimes amplify certain weak signals and often channeling those signals in direction rather than only one direction now this line in particular actually can trick you in a way that you have actually in previous lines uh, in the beginning you have learned that a uh, synapse only transmits signals in one way direction then why does it say that it can transmit in more than one way direction it is because of those variation of synapse that um, i'm telling you right now that there is a synapse called chemical synapse and chemical synapse actually ends up transmitting the signals in one way direction in on the other hand there is an electric synapse which actually is bidirectional in transforming signals or sensations so synapse can actually vary it in their functions according to their own structure 
now next para is storage of information which is memory actually now most of the storage occurs in cerebral cortex but even the basal regions of brain and spinal cord can store some amount of information it is very important to know then we are going to know about is facilitation now what is facilitation the storage of information process that we call memory is to a function of synapse that is also something very important to know that synapse is this type of function each time certain types of sensory signals pass through sequences of synapse these synapses become more capable of transmitting same type of signal the next time process called facilitation now in case of facilitation that thing that is more important to realize is that when signals are passing through synapses synapses are recognizing those signals so the second time they pass signals those signals synapse are actually familiar with those type of signals because they already passed once this actually is very important because when the synapses realize that these were the previous signals the channeling process becomes way too much easier than the before why is that important think of like you are actually trying to memorize one thing again and again reading one hard topic again and again those sensations those auditory sensations will pass through your brain pass through those synapses pass through those nerves and the more you continue to read it will actually clear your perception about it those signals uh, the next time they actually go through it they will be actually familiar the synapses will be familiar uh, to those signals and they will help you to actually memorize so the process of facilitation is actually very important in terms of memorization as it actually helps us to clear our perceptions now the process gives a person perception of experiencing the original sensation although the perceptions are not are only memories of the sensations i think that's very very important to know now actually when we are actually reading one thing again and again the synapses are getting familiar with the signals but take it as if the brain generates a uh, same amount of impulse some day or it tries to actually recollect those memories then the flow will be actually similar to the that of previous so how does that help uh think that you have read uh, something 15 times so the signal has gone through those synapses 15 times so the signal is recognized by the synapses then what happens then when you are not actually reading and in the example you are trying to recollect brain is actually generated the signals this time and those signals and what brain is trying to generate it actually will be similar brain is trying to actually generate the similar type of uh, signals that were previously passed through the synapses so the synapses recognize those signals very familiar the brain is right now so it is actually very easier for those brain to produce the same type of signals that is how we recollect our memories now overall why is this kind of hypothesis very important that it helps in the thinking process and it helps us to recollect uh, previous experiences which can actually help us in storage areas of the brain uh, which actually recollects memories and help us in dealing with things in the near future now let's jump into the next topic that is major levels of central nervous system function now because of the evolutionary development uh, the from this heritage three major levels of central nervous system has specific functional characteristics uh, they are the spinal cord levels the lower brain or subcortical levels and the higher brain or cortical levels now this part is very very important for the first professional examiners in bd cause it's a very frequent type of question given in terms in medical collisions as also in first prop exam now so we have to actually memorize this type of things in case of written and also in case of viva and also understand it uh, so now let's go through a spinal cord level now sp when we think of spinal cord we think that it only actually is a conduct unit that actually conducts sensation to our brain and again from brain it conducts sensation to the periphery for commanding purpose but not only that it has also certain type of um, actually functions which are walking movements reflexes that withdraw portions of the body from painful objects we know 
and then reflexes that stiffen our legs to support our body against gravity and then there are reflexes that control local blood vessels gastrointestinal movement and or urinary excretions now this is very very important to know the functions of spinal cord level in these cases in fact uh, what happens is that the upper levels of the nervous system often operate not by only sending signals directly to the periphery of the body but by sending signals to control centers of the cord simply commanding the cord to perform their functions so actually spinal cord is very very important than we actually realize it is now in case of lower brain or subcortical level uh, it actually does a lot of subconscious activities of the body that are controlled in the lower areas in brain now lower areas in the brain like medulla pons mesencephalon hypothalamus thalamus cerebellum and basal ganglia now what are those type of functions they are actually subcon subconscious uh, control of arterial blood pressure then there is control of equilibrium then there is feeding reflexes such as salivation in response to taste and actually leaking of lips when you are actually tasting something you we actually lick our lips too because it's very tasty now these things are controlling in areas of medulla, pons, mesencephalon, amygdala, and hypothalamus. In case of written, you have to actually memorize this type of points. Another important thing that actually subcortical level is responsible for is actually many emotional patterns such as anger, excitement, sexual reflex uh, response. Then there is reaction to pain, reaction to pressure that actually happen in animals even after the cerebral cortex has been even destroyed. Now, the higher brain or cortical level. Now, why is this important? It is important because it does a lot of important functions like it is the storehouse of memory. First of all, without memory, actually, human beings are not human beings because that's our brain is the most one of the most important things that actually separate us from the other animals. And then why cerebral cortex is again important because without it, the lower brain centers actually don't can't work precisely. They are imprecise. And the third point why it is very important because it actually helps us to think our thought processes are one of the most essential functions that actually occurs because of the cerebral cortex so we can see that uh, the three different levels of our brain actually uh, do different type of tasks which actually uh, complete us as human beings and separates from as rest of the animals as the higher beings okay now the next topic is comparison of the nervous system to a computer i think i don't need to actually go through this topic because this actually says the same type of stuff that I actually told in the intro that why should we actually think brain as a computer that it actually processes a lot of sensations and gives uh, integrates those sensations those data and then sends command to the periphery as it is controlling so that commands are output sensations are input and the integration is actually processing these three things are actually similar to that of a computer that actually how computer does its own functions now the next uh, thing is central nervous uh, synapse uh, system synapses now it is important because that we know there are a lot of nerve impulses which are actually we are talking about or recalling them as sensations now nervous system is mainly form of nerve action potential that is what we all know now synaptic functions of neuron are very very important in this case cause they can alter these nerve impulses when needed so in addition to a normal nerve impulse they can be blocked in its transmissions from one neuron to the next now why does this happen this can happen if the impulse itself is actually I uh, think that it's actually unnecessary to the brain but brain thinks that it is unnecessary then it can block or the impulse is actually way too much strong for the neurons to handle then they can block the signals in such a way that it can harm us then another point to be noted is that it may, it may be changed from single impulse to repetitive impulse now why does this happen this can happen in case of certain types of conditions one of which that i would like to state that in some cases when a nerve impulse has to go a long way repetitive impulse may be generated inside the nervous system 
another thing is may be integrated by with other impulses like sensation of clothes all the sensations go to our brain presenting that all the board all of our body is covered with cloth like that now the topic that we are going to discuss is types of synapses which we are actually discussing chemical and electrical synapses two major types now in our body that most common type is chemical synapses which does actually one way transmission of signals the other is chemical synapses which are not actually uh, actually less found in case of our body then compared to chemical synapse and chemical uh, electrical synapse actually does uh, bidirectional conduction of sensations of impulses now why does it do so because there are some structural differences that i'm going to show in you the easiest way this is a figure of chemical synapse and this is a figure of electrical synapse now by looking at the figures we can actually uh, discriminate the differences one in case of chemical synapse there are neurotransmitters these are synaptic vesicles containing these molecules which are neurotransmitters and first of all above all let's first in case of chemical synapse let's see the parts now this part is presynaptic terminal okay this part is presynaptic terminal this is space empty space actually is known as synaptic cleft and this this is known as post synaptic membrane now in case of this why it is unidirectional conduction of impulses is because there are some structural differences in pre and post synaptic terminals now in case of this pre synaptic terminal there are presence of mitochondria neurotransmitters which are actually absent in post synaptic membrane so that's why neurotransmitters come here and actually cause the flow of sensation of generation or generation of impulse actually but the post synaptic membrane as it doesn't have those neurotransmitters it can't actually do the same thing to the pre synaptic terminal and cause the sensation to go other way around but in case of chemical oh sorry pardon me in case of electrical synapse this type of structures is absent there are presence of mitochondria but absence of any kind of neurotransmitter or any kinds of synaptic vesicle now what it does is that there are specific gap junctions which actually direct the channeling of ions and generate impulses and uh, the intercellular gap is about 20 to 40 angstrom now it's very important cause these structural differences actually are important uh, and play the important roles in case of unidirection and bidirectional conduction of sensations now in case of uh, electrical synapse now why it is important it is for example important because electrical synapses are useful in detecting coincidence of simultaneous sub threshold depolarizations now why is that important to know is because in some cases of neuron there are a lot of uh, sub threshold depolarizations or action potentials which actually depolarize those are all sub threshold not up to the threshold mark so they are actually integrated in a way that all those things are enabling increased neural sensitivity as a whole and together they are crossing the threshold line which produces the firing of a group of interconnected neurons i hope you get it now if i would want to elaborate on this situation more easily is that think of there is one neuron and there are four other neurons extending their axonal processes to that particular neurons dendrites or near are the soma and those four neurons are actually giving impulses or producing impulses to that particular neuron but the problem is all those impulses are sub threshold or under the threshold level so the depolarization are actually 
under the subtraction level and as a result it won't actually generate the sensation or actually cause the flow in that particular neuron so what if all those four small weak impulses are generated at a time at a time thus causing i mean suppose if the threshold level is four and all those have sub threshold type of capacity and the only order or the following thing that is actually going to eligible the sensation to pass or the sensations to work is that it has to be breached up to four mark but each of those four neurons are carrying one mark depolarization unit now what happens is that all those sensations of those four neurons come at a single time then the total amount of sensation will reach to four that will be up to the threshold mark and causing the repolarization and would promote the synchronous firing of interconnected neurons like in i say ba if i say in bangla then that would be uh chatta neuron ekta neuron ke depolarize korbe ba tader moddhe theke sensation asteche so tokhon ki hobe jinish ta je chatta dhoro eki shomoy discharge holo eki shomoy discharge howar por tomar dhoro eki sathe howar karone shobgula jog phol tomar threshold cross korlo ha tokhon ei ta tomar threshold ta cross korte parche ei ta ki bolteche tomar synchronous firing of interconnected neurons now the next topic that we are going to uh, discuss is one way conduction of chemical synapses uh, that i actually hinted previously that why is it occurring because there is absence of neurotransmitter in post synaptic terminal and presence of it in the pre synaptic terminal makes this actually chemical structure as it is and it is the main reason why the conduction is going only one way cause the neurotransmitter flow is coming from the pre synaptic to the post synaptic terminal and not the other way around now it is important in cases like when nervous system has to do uh, specific goals the stimulations has to actually flow through uh, directed and one way uh, direction which is very important in case of i think control mechanisms memory and also in other functions so that is why chemical synapse is actually very very important now the next thing is physiological anatomy of synapse now physiological anatomy of synapse this uh, part is actually stating that the parts of a typical anterior motor neuron that has soma which is also known as cell body and there are dendrites and axons now we discussed earlier uh, moments ago that what were presynaptic terminals they can also be termed as uh, synaptic knobs which are from other neurons and actually these presynaptic uh, terminals uh, actually synapses most commonly with the dendrites and less commonly with the soma that is the primary concept of synapses as if we actually read earlier because when we think about synapses what comes to our mind is one axon of one neuron then the other dendrite of another neuron so that is the thing and the another thing to notify from this para is stated here that uh, pre synaptic uh, neurons or pre synaptic those knobs actually can conduct excitatory also inhibitory impulse that is actually very important to know here and the last remaining portion actually state that neurons in other parts of the cord and brain how differ from the anterior motor neuron in terms of size of cell body then the another point is the length size and number of dendrites then the another point is the length and size of action and the last point is the number of presynaptic terminals so this actually vary in terms of other neurons and the anterior motor neuron now let's further dive into the topic of presynaptic terminals now i stated before earlier that what are presynaptic terminals presynaptic terminals are the is the component of the neurons axon which is going to secrete neurotransmitters into the dendritic or postsynaptic portion of the other neuron okay now the presynaptic terminals uh, when it is actually 
uh, studied under electron microscope, it is seen that uh, there are a lot of oval knobs by which uh, a lot of neurotransmitters come out actually. Now, another highlighted portion would be the fact that um, the another important component that between presynaptic and postsynaptic uh, membrane there is a space known as synaptic clip and that is much more also important now uh, if we actually going to talk about the structure let me show you the previous diagram right now to actually for better understanding now we are going to look at this figure because we are actually talking about chemical synapse uh, functional uh, structure. So here we can see that this is the presynaptic um, terminal and this is the postsynaptic terminal. This is the knob, oval shaped knob which is actually secreting neurotransmitter. Now this space in between is known as the synaptic clip which is about 200 to 300 m strong in length now the thing is what makes presynaptic and postsynaptic membrane different is that the presence of two things two important things one is mitochondria and there is synaptic vesicles or neurotransmitter vesicles now because postsynaptic membrane doesn't have those two things the signals or sensations can flow through only from one direction that is from pre to postsynaptic terminals another important thing that we should know that uh, synaptic clip has its own importance that it has certain types of things like neurotransmitter degrading enzymes and polysaccharides which are actually a lot important and the importance actually we can low, uh, learn uh, when we actually proceed in the chapter uh, we will actually know in description but right now let's actually try to remember and memorize that what are the things that it has or it contains in case of pc manaptic terminal the importance of mitochondria is in case of actually producing atp for the synthesis of new new neurotransmitter vesicles and the presence of uh, synaptic vesicles is to actually contain the neurotransmitters cause uh, secretion process occurs um, another thing that i would like to mention is that there is presence of calcium channels now calcium is a very important component when it comes to actually uh, produce or conduct sensations now let me give you a quick overview that how actually it's occurring first of all let us think that an impulse has been generated and the flow of impulse has come from this and it's going towards this direction okay now as an electric potential has already been risen it will actually um what should i say action potential will arrive at p synaptic nerve terminal like it will arrive from there to this portion which is presynaptic nerve terminal now it will cause these calcium channels to open up and cause calcium influx into the presynaptic terminal now what is the role of calcium and why it is needed calcium is actually present in the synaptic clip this area and due to the fact that there is action potential generated in here calcium goes in goes inwards then what does it do it has a lot of uh, specific functions like calcium will bind into the proteins certain types of proteins presented in here in the presynaptic terminal now when calcium binds into these proteins these synaptic vesicles also have some complementary protein that I'm going to elaborate further when we actually go through the chapter. But know right now that there are presence of some proteins which are actually complementary to the proteins situated in the presynaptic terminals. Now these get attracted because of presence of calcium has already binded with this protein. Okay, present in the presynaptic terminal. So these two protein bind like this and then the knob occurs and the transmitting vesicles are then secreted this is what 
makes it more interesting because due to this function actually the one way conduction system actually happens so these morphological structural i mean advancements allow the chemical synapse to conduct the uh, uh, signals or should i say sensations in only one way direction the same thing is actually stated here that when action potential spreads over a presynaptic terminal depolarization of its membrane causes a small number of vesicles to empty into the cleft the release transmitter in turn causes an immediate change in permeability characteristics of the postsynaptic neuronal membrane which leads to excitation or inhibition of the postsynaptic neuron depending on the neuronal receptor characteristics so basically the main thing is the process that i actually showed you it is the most important part up to that occurrence it's the function occurring in the presynaptic terminal then what happens is that neurotransmitters when they are actually have exocytosed into the postsynaptic terminals there are specific kind of receptors let me just show you now these there are presence of some receptors you know these neurotransmitters are actually attracting into those receptors and causing permeability of ions in the postsynaptic membrane now release of neuron transmitter in the synaptic cleft also occurs so synaptic cleft actually doesn't need those neurotransmitters because synaptic cleft doesn't have any receptors for that that is why there are neurotransmitter phagocytes which actually get rid of those extra things which are actually secreted such as suppose this small neurotransmitter is actually didn't sit at any of the receptors it is floating in the synaptic clip then what will happen is that presence of neurotransmitting phagocytes will actually phagocyte it and keep the synaptic clip very clean that is the importance of synaptic clip also so further due neurotransmitters when have diffused through the synaptic clip neurotransmitters will binding to receptors their receptors present in postsynaptic clips now when it occurs and when the receptors are actually binding with the neurotransmitter what happens is that they are getting stimulated now stimulated being stimulated two things can actually happen one is it can actually increase the permeability of positive ions which can cause impulse production or action potential generation or depolarization or in other hand what it can cause is that influx of chloride ion which is negative ion and cause hyperpolarization thus no action potential would be generated and it would be actually inhibitory in nature and this phenomenon actually would depend on the neurotransmitter that if it is excitatory neurotransmitter or inhibitory neurotransmitter let me just simplify simplify that suppose neurotransmitter is coming now if the neurotransmitter by its character is excitatory then it will cause after that it has bounded with the receptors it will cause influx of positive ions if it's not excitatory if it is inhibitory in nature the neurotransmitter then after binding with the receptor it will cause influx of negative ions negative ions are inhibitory in nature whereas positive ions were exhibitory in nature so the question that whether it will actually increase or decrease the action potential or it will generate action potential or it will not generate action potential would actually depend on the neurotransmitter present or secreted by the presynaptic neuron on its character i think i am clear with it now the thing i want to make myself clear is that um, synapse as a whole up to this point we have learned that synapse follows certain type of functions such as um, synapse 
help us in transmitting of nerve impulses then integration of nerve impulse formation of reflex arc and acts as a connection spot in the neural chain so these are the basic type of function that you know synapse nervous system synapse is actually doing and synapse is actually responsible for a lot of things actually helps us in clearing perception and etc which is actually important in case of our memory so i think up till now we have actually discussed very vital components of synapse and other nervous related topics furthermore as we advance into the topic we will know about neurotransmitters the importance of neurotransmitters and how synapse is actually working how the neurotransmitter is actually going through the processes of second messenger system what is second messenger system then how does it actually increase the fluctuations of ion and how can electric uh, synapse actually help in case of uh, transmissions of impulse we will get to that on the next video thank you